We have a quorum. We have a quorum. Uh, I see Chairman Williamson here, uh, Jody, uh, Councilman Lavelle. Um, scanning the list here. That's, that's all I see. A uh, 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 board member Powell's here. So we definitely have a have a quorum. And with that, I will uh, pass it over to uh, Sam for opening comments. It's a uh, uh, to uh, order the meeting in. All right, can you hear me now? I can hear you, Sam. Okay, great. Um, oh, my audio went out again. Sorry, hold on one sec. I can't hear anything. All right, try again. How's that? Perfect. All right, sorry about that. Um, great. So, as Greg said, what I did hear was that uh, we have a quorum, and uh, Representative uh, Jamie is not going to be present for today's meeting, but uh, all four other board members are present. So that will be reflected in in next in the meetings for this uh, this month's meeting, the minutes for this month's meeting. Our first order of business is to approve the uh, board meeting minutes from last month's meeting, from the September 9th meeting. So moved. Thank Second. you. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And public comment. I know we did not receive any written submissions in public comment in advance. Do we have any? Anyone who registered to provide live public comment? We did not. Okay. Uh, it's kind of a record thing. So no public comment for today. And uh, I think we'll move right into announcements. Greg, are you covering this stuff? Uh, I can if you'd like to. I um, if I may, uh, I believe Councilman Lavelle was going to speak to the first item and then Maya is going to speak to the second. Certainly. Um, so the first one is the announcement of the Center Hellman Plaza Grocer has been selected, which is Salim's Marketing Grill. Um, and what we're really announcing is that we're going to be entering lease negotiations um, with them to occupy the former Shop and Save, soon to be Salim's Marketing Grill. One, I think it's really exciting. Um, two, I think just for context, um, I think it's helpful to just go through how we got here very briefly. Um, it was back in November of 2019 that the URA acquired the former Shop and Save, the Center Hellman Plaza. And we did so with the explicit intent to make sure that that plaza, which was built with public, mostly with public dollars, would be able to maintain and, and be for the public good moving forward. Um, so I wanna thank the URA for one, taking that step to acquire it. Um, it was then in March of 2020 when RFI was released for the entire plaza. Um, we did get responses for the storefronts, but we got no response whatsoever for an actual grocer. Um, but it's also important to note that was also during the height of the pandemic. So also somewhat understandable. It was then in March of 2021 that the URA hired a broker to begin going out and looking to see whom we could attract for this site. And what I will say is we literally reached out and probably spoke to every major operator 
that exists that we could possibly talk to. Shop and Save, Aldi's, Giant Eagle, Kroger, you name it, we were reaching out, um, which is how even Fresh International, which is even in this market, um, sort of piqued their interest because we were reaching out to any and all. Um, it was after that, that uh, once the brokers did their due diligence, um, we finally ended up with four who were truly interested in the plaza. They all responded, they submitted their letters, and then we went through a community process that was really guided by the Hill CDC. So I need to thank the Hill CDC for their process in this as well, whereby we had community meetings, the community had an opportunity to vote and say who they wanted to bring into their community. And Celine's Market and Grill was by and large the clear favorite. Um, the other thing I think is worth, noted, worth noting, because I've been asked this question, the intent here is to double the size of the current operation that is taking place currently in the strip district. So Salim's market will really become a true grocery store. The intent here is that anyone who is shopping there will be able to get all of what they need there, whether it's uh, spices, toilet paper, or milk and eggs. Um, you will, you'll be able to come here and get what you need. So this will indeed be a grocery store that is servicing the neighborhood while also then bringing the restaurant to the neighborhood, which also will increase its footprint, while also bringing the, the butcher to the neighborhood, um, which will also provide fresh food, fresh vegetables, fresh meat. Um, so I think this is really exciting. Um, and I think the other sort of exciting piece to it is anyone who knows Salim's know there's already a very established following um, of people that will follow Salim's no matter where he's coming, and now he's coming to the Hill District. And so that brings foot traffic that'll help aid and help support all the other minority businesses that we're trying to open up on Center Avenue. It'll help the community, the coffee shop that is currently on Center Avenue, it'll help support that. So this is really exciting. Um, I, I wanna thank all those who've been involved on the URA side, on the community side, um, to help us get to where we are today. So that's probably a long way of making that simple announcement, but it is an exciting opportunity for the community. So thank you all. Thanks, Councilman. That was a great overview. Very exciting progress. Uh, I think Maya is going to walk us through the, Maya, Maya Fuse is going to walk us through the Homewood Avenue RFI. Yes. On October 25th, the URA will be issuing a request for information for five parcels along North Homewood Avenue. We are looking for a development team or a developer to serve as our partner as we work for work to redevelop affordable housing and activate commercial space. This will be our first redevelopment project on the corridor and we are looking forward to working with the community throughout this process. Great. Uh, the only other announcements that are probably worth making at the moment are that today uh, the 9% LIHTC uh, Low Income Housing Tax Credit Awards were announced for the city and Pittsburgh received three 9% low income housing tax credit awards uh, for what will end up being a total of 112 units of affordable housing. Uh, one of the awards will go to Cedarwood Homes in, in uh, Ferrywood. The second will go to Catalyst Communities in the Hill District. And the third to Hilltop Alliance and Gatesburg Road Development on the, in, uh, for a scattered site development in the Hilltop. So uh, that's great news to get those three LIHTC awards that'll help us increase the, continue to increase the stock of affordable housing across the city. So we're celebrating that and just wanna thank the, each of those developers and community organizations and the staff of the URA that worked hard on uh, helping them with their submissions. Um, we uh, I did announce last month that we would be holding an executive session between last month's meeting and today's meeting to discuss uh, the Somera Road development, which is back on the agenda for today. Uh, there's no announcement necessary for that executive session because the board never ended up meeting in executive session. So we just wanna make that clear. There were individual briefings provided to board members that provided a um, you know, really extensive and detailed deep dive into the financial details of that proposed development, um, but no executive session ended up actually being held. So with that, I think those are all the 
announcements or clarifications that we have for today's meeting, and we'll, we'll move on I think, uh, to the voting agenda, beginning with the uh, approval of the 2022 Housing Opportunity Fund Allocation Plan. Is uh, Bettina? There you are. Yep. Go ahead. Thanks. Go ahead. Thanks, Sam. Um, so we are seeking authorization to approve 2022 housing annual allocation plan um, for the following amounts. Um, this will then be advanced to the um, approved today. today to be advanced to city council. Bettina, you're kind of going in, or out, in and out. Your audio is hard to hear. Oh, okay. Let me try adjusting that. Was that a little better? Yeah, you might start from the top, Bettina. You broke up pretty, pretty badly there. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Much better. Okay. 22 Housing Opportunity Fund allocation plan. For the following uh, for the rental gap program, uh, 3.8 million, housing stabilization program, 525,000, down payment and closing cost assistance, 700,000, homeowner assistance program, 50,000, for sale development program, 950,000, legal assistance program. Thousand small landlord five thousand. Um, if this were to be approved today, it would so uh, for final approval. Um, these are our recommended amounts again for the twenty twenty two housing opportunity fund annual allocation plan. Um, next slide, please. Um, Bettina, you're still uh, cutting in and out. Uh, Shana, are you able to take over? Athena, are you able to move closer to a, uh, a Wi-Fi source? Let me see. Is that better? By chance? Is that better at all? It, it's hard to say. Uh, you keep cutting out. Um, um, yeah, it might be my, my uh, Wi-Fi. You know, would you like me to step in? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, thank you so much for all your hard thank work. You. No problem. Okay, great. Um, the 2022 Hoff Allocation Plan is based on survey results, public comments, current program pipelines, and available funding for the next year. I will provide a brief summary of the 2022 Hoff timeline to provide context for how the plan was constructed. The community outreach RFP was issued in May to the pre-approved slate of Hoff community outreach and marketing consultants. The ORA received two responses to the RFP from Hilltop Alliance and Pittsburgh United. Both firms were selected to perform community outreach and marketing services over a six week period with a goal to collect a minimum of 75 unique responses over the phone or online. URA staff and consultants utilized several marketing methods, which included outreach via social, social media and email distribution groups, phone and limited in-person outreach and virtual community presentations to promote the survey. Pittsburgh United hosted two virtual communities and Hilltop Alliance hosted three virtual communities in July. In total, 488 responses were collected. So as you can see in the timeline, um, Last Thursday, we the Hoff Advisory uh, voted to approve the allocation plan that we're presenting today. But um, this timeline kind of reflects all the steps that uh, were taken to get us to today. Next slide, please. This slide um, is a snapshot of the survey respondents' demographic information. When compared to the city of Pittsburgh's overall population, there was a greater than average representation among homeowners versus renters reflected in the survey. The survey trended older than the average age, which is 35 years or older for the city. And in terms of ethnicity, 
35% of respondents were Black or African American, 57 respondents were white, five of respondents were two or more ethnicities, two were Asian, and 1% were other. Um, next slide, please. So this slide uh, reflects the ranking from the survey responses, um, the ranking of existing HOF allocation, HOF programming, that's the top section. And then this, the bottom section is the ranking from survey respondents, um, ranking eligible uses for HOF funding, but not necessarily current um, HOF programming. So for existing programs that the HOF um, currently has, the top ranked program by our respondents was building more affordable housing for rent. That second um, highest ranking program was helping people make home repairs, which is our homeowner assistance program, helping people buy their first homes came in third, building more affordable housing for for sale came in fourth, short-term financial help for renters, and then responding to large scale emergencies. So, so that's the ranking of current uh, HOF programming. Um, as far as eligible uses that um, could result in new programming, um, the first, the highest ranked uh, use was avoiding foreclosure, then making affordable housing more permanent, accessibility for seniors and people with disabilities, legal help, and you'll see they go um, down um, throughout the ranking slide. But what we heard from the, the public as far as our current existing programs is that there is still a, a, a constant demand to create affordable rental units and to support current homeowners through our assistance program. Next slide. This slide um, shows how different groups ranked current and potential HOF programs. So for example, renters ranked building more affordable housing for rent as their number one priority, whereas homeowners rank helping people make home repairs as uh, number one. So just kind of thinking about the um, demographics of our respondents and how they view their priorities. Next slide. Oh, I think I confused the last slide. I'm sorry, this is the ranking of current HOF programs um, by the demographics. And the last slide was those eligible programs, eligible uses that do not currently reflect a, a program. So for this, if you look at the, well, let's just go to the next slide. I'm getting lost in the numbers. <laughs> so here is the Hoff allocation plan. Uh, reflects the awards and plan from 2018 with the inception of the Housing Opportunity Fund in 2018 um, to 2022. Um, as Vatina broke down those different program, those different program allocations at the beginning. Um, but what we're here to present to you and request uh, approval on is 3.8 million in rental gap program funds. 90, 950,000 in for sale development program funds, 2,150,000 in homeowner assistance program, 700,000 in down payment closing costs, 525,000 in housing st stabilization program, uh, 450 in legal assistance program and small landlord funds in the amount of 425. Uh, I do wanna note that the first draft that was approved during the September Hoff advisory board meeting originally had $200,000 allocated towards demo dollars. However, after hearing public comment during the October Hoff Advisory Board meeting, the advisory board amended the draft plan to reallocate the demo dollars to the legal assistance program to adequately prepare for the anticipated wave of evictions in 2022, making the legal assistance program final allocation $450,000 and eliminating demo dollars in the 2022 allocation. Additionally, the small landlord fund is a new program that we're rolling out to be funded with HOF. The intent there is to support uh, landlords that have portfolios that are below 10 units or less. 
um, these units will uh, be rented to uh, tenants at 80% AMI or less. So we're really excited to add that into the Hoff portfolio of programming. Next slide. This shows the 2022 allocation plan uh, recommendation. However, it's broken down between the AMI levels, 30% AMI, 80%, 50% AMI, and then 80%. Um, so that is all I have for you on this. Uh, take any questions or comments. Thanks, Jaina. I, I think it's just worth just um, reviewing these numbers just one more time since uh, since Athena was cutting out the in the in the first run through, I know you just did it, but you know, so so the proposal here, which again comes to us from the 17 member uh, Housing Opportunity Fund Advisory Board, which are you know community members and affordable housing experts appointed to oversee the Housing Opportunity Fund uh, from across the city, appointed by the mayor. So they meet, they uh, take into account the. You know, the, the public comment uh, that they've received and the input from community outreach that Shana described and present then to the board this, this recommendation for allocating the annual $10 million in the Housing Opportunity Fund. And so again, the proposal here is $3.8 million for rental gap financing. So that is money that then uh, uh, is provided as loans to developers to create more rental units in the city of Pittsburgh or to preserve existing rental units. So a project has a, has a funding gap and you know, needs additional funding in order to, to uh, create more affordable housing. That's what that money is used for. The housing stabilization program, that $525,000 is used to provide direct assistance to Pittsburghers facing the short-term uh, rent emergencies in terms of paying their rent and being able to stay in their, in their homes. Uh, the $700,000 in down payment assistance is the down payment closing cost assistance program, which provides uh, direct assistance to uh, low income Pittsburghers buying their first homes in the city of Pittsburgh, which to date has helped something like 240 Pittsburghers buy their first houses in the city since the inception of the Housing Opportunity Fund. Uh, $2.15 million in the homeowner assistance program, which helps existing homeowners. So if you already own your home, but you're below, I think, 80% AMI in your family uh, and have urgent repairs that are needed for, to your house, the Homeowners Assistance Program can help you with those repairs. The For Sale Development Program uh, helps to try to in increase the availability of affordable for sale units uh, by providing you know, development dollars to create more affordable housing that is for sale. And then as Shana said, the Legal Assistance Program uh, was expected to be urgently needed as we emerge from COVID uh, and provide direct legal help to people facing, facing eviction or other housing issues. Uh, and that's $450,000 and then $425,000 for the Small Landlord Fund, which provides um, assistance to small landlords seeking to upgrade their, um, their properties and importantly, uh, you know, make them eligible for, for potentially for uh, for for Section 8 uh, recipients. So that's the overview. Does anybody from the board have any questions or comments? Um, I, I wanted to talk about the legal assistance program, um, just, you know, from my perspective and talking to the community members, in particular, the eviction prevention cohort, um, that that's, uh, you know, uh, a mix of uh, eviction prevention groups, human services, courts, and government. Um, this is going to be critical um, as we, you know, think about as a lot of these moratoria have lifted, um, how there are concerns locally about, um, you know, our ability to get ERAP and rental assistance to people fast enough. Uh, providing legal assistance is so critical um, and can really uh, be the difference of someone, you know, staying in their home and someone being put out on the streets. And so uh, definitely, love uh, that the uh, the Housing Opportunity Fund Board, as well as community um, have really pushed for that fund to be expanded because while it's, you know, staying pretty steady right now, um, come November, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, unfortunately, we're gonna see a surge of um, eviction petitions filed. So 
really good to see that we're um, protecting people and allowing them to stay in place. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I did, oh, I'm sorry. I did wanna uh, acknowledge the question. I think there was a question in the um, chat. Um, Uh, it's in the Q&A. Sorry. Uh, what are the lengths, terms of affordability if a landlord uses the rental gap program? Sure, great question. Uh, when using rental gap program, the affordability restriction that is recorded on the property is for 40 years. And Thank then you. what's the level of affordability on that? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, for Hoff programming, it maxes out at 50% AMI or less. Um, we're also looking to target 30% AMI or less. Uh, the actual rental gap program does have a upper threshold of 60% AMI or less, but when we're talking about um, Hoff funds specifically, 50% um, is the upper limit for Hoff funds, but the program does allow for 60% AMI or less. And, and you can see from the chart there that of the 3.8 million that's proposed for rental gap financing, 3 million would be reserved for units affordable at, at or below 30% AMI, so that's deeply affordable units, and the other 800,000 for units at, that it would be affordable at 50% AMI. So most of that $3.8 million is being proposed to be used for, you know, for sort of the most affordable units. Any other questions, comments? And if none, then uh, I think a motion to approve would be in order. So move. Second. Thank you, motioned and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And also thanks to all the work of the advisory board that spent a lot of hours uh, listening to public comment and listening to, um, you know, to folks who showed up at community meetings to provide input under this plan. Next in development services, uh, we have a parking garage at that technology center in South Oakland that Gary Luginski is going to pre uh, present on. Yes, thank you, Chairman Williamson. Good afternoon. Authorization is requested to enter into four prime contracts at 925 Technology Drive, which is a new six-story parking garage within Pittsburgh Technology Center. The first agreement is with CPS Construction Group for general construction. That value is $14,335,980. Uh, the second contract would be for plumbing construction with WG Tomco Incorporated for $304,333. The third would be for mechanical construction also with WG Tomco for $65,555. And the fourth final prime contract would be for electrical construction with Clista Electric for $1,847,000. Uh, bids were received on July 14th of this year. Uh, construction, construction is expected to start next month, November 2021. Construction is expected to take 10 months approximately, and all MWB plans have been approved. Um, the next slide will be the Pittsburgh um, De Development Fund Loan, and Amanda Lutet will discuss that. Thank you. Thanks, Mac. Um, yeah, so uh, the next item, um, you know, back in June 2019, uh, the URA had released an RFP for design and engineering services for a parking garage at PTC, um, which spurred years of planning and design work, um, you know, getting to this point. But even prior to that, staff was putting together a funding scheme for this parking garage. Um, today, we are requesting that the board authorize a $2.5 million PDF or Pittsburgh Development Fund loan for construction of a garage. 
PDF funding has been a keystone piece of the parking garage's funding plan since it was first imagined. Um, the plan also includes sales proceeds from PTC real estate and a construction loan that will bridge the TIF surplus that'll be available in 20 or 2024 and a pending RCAP ask. Um, so again, uh, we are also requesting authorization for a um, PDF loan for $2.5 million. Any questions? Comments? So again, this is a two-part uh, two part approval. First, to award the four uh, contracts for the construction, and second, to award the PDF loan in the amount of $2.5 million. And you can see on the slide there the other sources of funding for the for the uh, overall cost of the garage. Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The motion carries. Amanda, you're going to present on this one too? Yes. Um, so uh, back in spring of this year, Casa San Jose approached the URA about developing our 1602 to 1606 Broadway Avenue property in Beachview. Um, the other intent is to develop it into their permanent home where they can consolidate their operations into one location. After undergoing a grant funded project feasibility study, we are now asking that the board authorize entering into an option agreement for the sale of block 35F lot 267, or you know, the 1602-1606 Broadway Avenue um, to Casa San Jose or an entity formed by them for a dollar plus cost. Um, ultimately, the URA will develop the site for Casa San Jose as they focus on their capital campaign and delivery of services. In turn, Casa San Jose will lease the property until the end of their fundraising campaign, at which time they will exercise their, op their option to purchase. Great. And do we have uh, somebody from Casa San Jose to, to speak to this as well? Um, yeah, so uh, Monica could not make this, but um, she asked for Veronica um, to attend. So Veronica should be um, in. Hi, Veronica, you're welcome to add anything you want to add. Thank you so much for that for the time to uh, address this matter. Um, the only thing I would like to say is that well, everybody knows already the work that Casa San Jose does, but having a permanent space, you know, where we can continue building a community that is connected, that work together on building a new programs, and that can bring prosperity to everyone. So having Casa San Jose move into this location will benefit everyone because we're gonna be connecting the community on creating new programs, additional to the programs that CASA already offering. And at this time, CASA San Jose does not have a proper space uh, where we can continue growing the way that we need to grow and serve the community the way that we need to serve them. We're, we've reached out our space limited capacity, uh, our staff grow, the families that we serve grow, Beachview is one of the largest area in the um, uh, Allegheny County, the Casa San Jose service the families. We don't have that much space where we are right now that sometimes we have to see clients on the sidewalk. We have to put chairs on the sidewalk to attain uh, cases and we cannot be continue doing that anymore. That's not uh, proper, right? We need to uh, have a better location where we can bring the community together under one roof and continue the service that we do. So having the URA approval for us to move to this location will show that the confidence that, they, that you have on Casa San Jose's mission and the confidence that you will have on Casa San Jose's work that provides for this community. I really hope and on behalf of the clientele that we have, the families, I really hope that um, this is being approved so we can 
go ahead and start planning to move to our new home very soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Casa San Jose does incredibly important work for people across the, not just the city, but across the whole region. So thanks for being here, but more importantly, thanks for everything you guys do for the people of the city. Thank you so much. Any questions or comments? No questions, just re what, reiterate what you said, Sam. Great organization, this is fantastic. Yeah, love to see this. Take a motion to approve would be in order. So moved. So moved. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Next, uh, we have the project that we talked about a bit last month, and it's back on our agenda this month, the Somera Road apartment project at the Southside Works. Uh, Adelaide, you're gonna give us a refresher on this? Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we are uh, recommending we accept the redevelopment proposal of Samara Road Southside Works apartments and entering into a disposition contract with Samara Road or a related entity. Next slide. So, as you all know, Samara Road proposes constructing a seven story, 246 unit residential building along the Mungahela Riverfront in the Southside Flats neighborhood. The DRA has tried to develop the site since 1999, but the previous projects fell through due, due to infeasibility. The Samara Road proposal will be 100% privately financed. Although the site does not include affordable housing, Samara Road has put forth the only feasible proposal while also requiring no government soft funds or tax breaks, something that has proven to be difficult given the site conditions. When we tried to include affordable housing at the property, the project faced a huge funding gap. Over, over the last six months, uh, we've extracted several concessions from the developer, which go above and beyond the development agreement and deliver uh, several key benefits to Pittsburgh residents. The, the project will obligate Samara Road to leverage more than $26 million in private investment to revitalize its former Brownfield steel mill site. It will uh, generate significant tax revenue for the city, uh, approximately $10 million over the next 10 years. It will create 17 affordable units at the neighboring Southside Flats property located down the street. It will reserve 5,000 square feet of below market rate retail space for locally owned businesses. It will invest $4.7 million in public infrastructure and improvements, including public arts, streetlights, an ice skating rink, a playground, and a town square for community events. And then finally, it will increase higher MWBE participation goals for the project by 7% or 25% total for minority owned businesses and 3% or 10% total for women owned businesses. As, as part of the proposal, the URA will amend the development agreement to extend development rights through 2026 and increase the viability of developing parcel D3A. Uh, at this time, I am happy to answer any questions. You may have mentioned it, but I, and I may have missed it. I apologize if you did. But can you also speak to the fact that they have to take on the environmental concerns of the site? Yes, so that's part of the site excavation work, uh, which they're performing right now. Uh, they, they've uh, spent about a million dollars on pre-development work, and they'll spend another million prior to closing. Thank you. So again, we had, we um, had held this agenda item last month in order uh, you know, for board members to be able to sort of more thoroughly review the underlying finances of the proposed project um, and, you know, and, and really look at you know, whether or not, um, whether there was a pathway essentially to increasing the, the number or depth of affordable units. 
Uh, and I, so I just want to take a moment and thank the, the staff, the URA staff that worked so hard to get the board all that additional information and hold those briefings over the course of the last month. Um, I think what we're what we're looking at here is a you know it, it's a really commendable outcome, uh, given that as as Adelaide said, there's no public money going into this project entirely privately financed, uh, and yet uh, we were able to sort of use the leverage of the URA and negotiating power to make to ensure that you know the city's going to get 17 affordable units out of this, thousands of square feet of affordable retail space, uh, which will be you know, incredibly important to small businesses and you know local minority-owned businesses seeking to set up, set up you know shop in, in the south side potentially, uh, you know, and, and all the other public benefits that the Adelaide went through. So, um, just want to sort of lift up your hard work and thank you for and taking the extra time to go through the details with board members individually and collectively and push so hard for the positive community outcomes that we see here. Any questions or comments? There was a question in the Q and A about this, but I, I can't. I, I'm able to pull it up, so I was hoping maybe somebody could read it out. I've got that for you. Uh, this question comes from Swain Uber. Could the URA negotiate the development to include some project-based voucher units, or require the acceptance acceptance, excuse me, of housing choice vouchers? I can, I can jump in quickly at the, I will say an, a potential issue with that is the, the market rate rents are incredibly high and I don't even know if the voucher program would help subsidize the difference just because it, it, it's, it's large, uh, upwards of a uh, $1,000 uh, for, for a two bedroom. And the reason we got comfortable with those super high market rate rents is it allows the project to support a large first mortgage and, and, and not require soft funds. Um, but that's, yeah, that's a good, I, I don't know enough about the, the Housing Authority of Pittsburgh versus HUD's uh, program. I know the Housing Authority of Pittsburgh though, they usually cap how much they'll subsidize, how, what the allowable market rate rent is. And from what I've seen, they're substantially lower than what's being proposed here. Yeah, I mean, I. It, I guess it, it bears repeating that the, you know, the construction costs here are higher than significantly higher than normal, in part because of the environmental remediation remediation that needs to take place. Uh, months were spent in negotiating and pushing and exploring every conceivable way to get to a larger number of affordable units. Um, you know, we took that's why we held this for an additional month is so that board members would have a chance to. Sort of delve deep into the numbers and you know and try to understand uh, you know the financial reality based in this project essentially. Yeah, Sam, and just to add, you know, we definitely went back and forth on this as a board, trying to consider again how we could make it more affordable or what we can get for communities um, surrounding um, this development in terms of um, benefits and you know overall thinking about uh, the discounted commercial space, which will hopefully allow for local um, and possibly an MWBE vendor uh, to be there. In addition, the green space, the public infrastructure improvements that Sam and others have talked about have been um, ways that we've worked with Samara Road uh, to ensure that even though there is no URA money going into this or public subsidy money going into this, that we are, are able to extract out um, you know, benefits that would work for not just those uh, living in the affordable units uh, in the flats, uh, but just the South side and, and overall Pittsburgh community in general. Thanks, Lindsay. Any other questions or comments? Those, the, so the affordable, I don't know if it says, it says so on the slide, but the, the discounted commercial space is at $15 a square foot, which is like for high visibility retail space, 
I don't know, high visibility retail space like that at Southside works often as thirty to thirty-five dollars a square foot. So it 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 actually makes you know uh, renting that retail space feasible and accessible to businesses like a catapult graduate, for example, uh, you know, or other small businesses trying to get their feet up on the ground. Um, so I think it's, that's a really significant uh, achievement here. So if there are no other questions or comments, then I think a motion would be uh, appropriate at this point. Motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Can't. Sorry, my, my mic was uh, frozen. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. And again, thanks. Uh, you know, thanks to the staff that put in the extra time to kind of walk us through all the financials and do a deep dive on this over the last month. Next up. Josette Fitzgibbons is going to talk to us about the, the Neighborhood Initiative Fund Awards. So um, the last uh, the last item on your agenda, so I'll try to be quick with this. Um, we are uh, asking for authorization to enter into grant agreements and related contracts with the, um, the organizations that are listed here uh, that have been awarded Neighborhood Initiatives Fund for the, the the 2021 round. Uh, we think it's a really great group of, of awardees. We actually got 23 proposals. All of them were really good and it was a very difficult, it was a very difficult decision to make. Um, but the, the awardees for this year are uh, the Jasmine Nyree Center's Community Access Pro Project in Sheridan, Mount Washington CDC's Business Incubator in Mount Washington, um, the Oakland Bid is doing their Pods of Opportunity program, obviously in Oakland. The South Pittsburgh Men's Group in Beltsuver is, is working on the Beltsuver Institute of Arts and Science. We're also uh, putting funds toward um, Big Tom's Barbershop in the Hill. Uh, Larmer Consensus Group is working with a developer on the um, 523 27 Larmer Avenue building, which is a pretty large building in the uh, Larmer Avenue commercial corridor. And then uh, renovations at 2115 Perrysville Avenue um, being done by Perry, Perry Hilltop Citizens Council. Next slide, Daniel. Uh, so just a very quick uh, review uh, between 19, uh, sorry, 2019 and 2020, uh, we awarded about $1.4 million in, in NIF awards for 28 projects um, impacting 26 neighborhoods. So this will, will be an additional 500,000 in, a, in um, an additional seven projects in seven neighborhoods. So any questions? No, it looks great. Any questions? Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Thanks, Jody. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. And then finally, we have the disclosure agenda pro forma matters that re require board approval, but usually not much discussion or explanation unless there's anything, Greg or Nathan or anybody else that you want to point out to us? Uh, not really, no. I think uh, one of the interesting ones is our URA is working with the city to issue an RFP for the Troy Hill Fire Station, which is kind of an interesting redevelopment opportunity. The URA uh, will share the proceeds of any um, any developer who requires it, but uh, it's kind of a late entry and it's a very interesting project. So I'd like to take this opportunity to kind of put it out to the ether that you were kind of interested in. Again. So, other than that, I just said, Sam, uh, all items would be pretty uh, perfunctory at this point. And at least to my mind, I don't really know what we're talking about too much. Okay, 
There are several properties being convicted at the Pittsburgh Land Bank, so that's good news and, and progress. Definitely, yes. We're excited about that. Uh, I would ask for a motion to approve the disclosure agenda in its entirety. So move. So moved. Motion and seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And that concludes uh, the October 14th meeting of the Urban Redevelopment Authority. Uh, I think we need a motion to adjourn. So move. Thank you. And seconded. Second. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting stands adjourned. Thank you so much.